Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We come to remember and commemorate the, uh, the Feast of the Assumption of St. Mary, Mother of God, the Theotokos. And it's a very rich subject. You can find, um, and if you search, you can find a lot of things to think about and meditate. Tonight, I thought about talking about a specific aspect of the life of St. Mary. That might be relevant to all of us. So, I want to start with this. So we all love our mothers, right? You all love your mothers. And your kids love you as a mother. But we all know, when you grow up, the weaknesses of our mother. And we say, oh, I wish my mother had uh, not felt this way. They're all you get this anxiety in the mother, something's gonna happen, something wrong is gonna happen, and usually it's vague. And then the mother lashes or, you know, screams and yells, and they say, I wish my mother was a little bit at peace. And then uh, maybe it becomes so bad that you say, I wish I had another mother. <laughs> but then I would ask the child, so who do you pick? Who would you pick if you were able to choose your mother? <laughs> so there was one person who got the chance to pick his mother. One person who got the chance to pick his mother. So what would he pick? As best as possible. The perfect mother. <laughs> the perfect, mother. <laughs> the perfect, perfect mother. yeah. As so can. I can offer, right? Yeah. As much, as the can. best that humanity can offer. That's, that's the best way to put it. So... Tonight I want to talk about this one aspect of St. Mary that um, I think it's very important that we don't ignore. There's an image in my mind about, um, we always sing the burning bush, and that image has just stuck with me for St. Mary since I was a little deacon. And the burning bush, you think about it, it's a, it's a bush, a plant in the desert. I just want, I like connecting, so just connect the images together with me, please. That's very important that you do this. It's a desert with a mountain. To connect, it's the same mountain that God will meet the Israelites, Mount Sinai. And this little tree, the little bush, it's a very little bush. Imagine, just with me, a small bush, bush is not a big tree, it's a small tree. At the foot of a huge mountain. How does it look like? So if you look at it from like 10 miles away, 20 miles away, it's a very tiny plant, a green plant, in the bosom of a huge mountain, awesome mountain. That mountain will be lit with fire a year almost later. But this time, it's only the bush that's lit. Just connect the images again. This one bush that was lit on fire, beginning, it begins an invitation for whole people to come and see the whole mountain on fire. And the, the bush will still be there. And I thought about this and it always gives me this tingling feeling. You go into that desert, the, the empty space, empty space. Living thing is alone in that wilderness. And God is using that in her loneliness. And by the way, St. Mary was alone. And this is where I want us to think about tonight. She was completely alone. I would just let you think about that for a second. We were not told that she had friends. Her parents had died. And she was given to this older man to take care of her. What kind of connection you have between 15 years old or 14 year old and a 50 or a 55 year old? Is that, you call that friendship? You call that any kind of acquaintance or friendship or any? No, none. St. Mary was alone, completely alone. But he asked St. Mary, like one monk asked a spiritual guide. It was a nun actually. He told to this older nun and said to her, Mother, I love God a lot. I want to dedicate myself and be a monk, but I'm afraid to be alone. <clears throat> uh, 
And what did she say? Who has God is never alone. Who has God is never alone. The, the condition is to have God. And then you're never alone. And he said, when she told me that, I was so much encouraged. I do have God. What am I afraid of? I talk to him. I feel him. I feel him so close. So I'm not going to suffer from loneliness in the future. And I found myself saying, no, I know what to do when I'm feeling lonely. I don't need anybody to tell me anything or to kind of converse with me. I know exactly what I need to do. I go into a conversation with the person that I love the most and he loves me and he is with me and I feel him. That's it. So he said he went and just joined the monastery and became a monk. So St. Mary was alone, but you guess, or I guess, she was never lonely. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. But I want to get, add a little bit of dimension to this. Think about her. How old is she? Was she when she was in that status? 14. What is the characteristic of this age, the teen age? What is the characteristic? They're longing for connection. They long, each one of them, they long to get out and find people that have the same mind, the same inclinations, the same ideas the same struggles, so I can feel that I'm not alone. I want to run away from this. That, that's hell on earth. And I would do anything to escape it. So I go and associate with anybody. You know, you know why people get addicted? 99% of the addiction reasons is loneliness. So here you have a teenager, the time of highest socializing inclination, and she would need to be with someone. Uh, you know, better if it is a, a, a handsome Jewish boy. If not, at least a girl, a dog, anything. <laughs> right? But St. Mary was this burning bush in the wilderness by itself, but in the bosom of God. In the bosom of God. That's why what happened in St. Mary, today we were talking about liturgical theology, and we say, we say always, you know, if you don't have a priest or a bishop, if you don't have a bishop, you cannot have any churches, you cannot have baptism, you cannot have chrismation, you cannot have anything, marriage. There's nothing. Once you don't have the bishop, because they are entrusted with the gift of the Holy Spirit. They give the, whole, the Holy Spirit to priests to become priests. They give the Holy Spirit to the baptized to become Christians, chrismated. But guess what? St. Mary was entrusted with the person who will be the source of priesthood. She's being given much more than what a high priest or a bishop would have or a patriarch. That's why she's much higher. But let's talk about her loneliness a little bit. To complicate things for St. Mary, she's a teenager with a child. Oh no. Now it's much more than being alone. Now she's alone with a problem. And no one, no one, including, and the trial goes up to that Joseph himself will be thinking, what happened? What should I do with her? So that only man that she has in her life that's considered like a, a father figure, now is thinking about letting go of her. So that's St. Mary's place. But I guess what? This vulnerability, this weakness, this awful situation became her source of filling. Because all what she had, she gave to the Lord. She gave him all her loneliness. And when that happens, loneliness turned to be a paradise, to be something very exciting. I tell you why people do suffer from loneliness. Loneliness became a paradise because of need to him. But loneliness become a hell on earth when there is no God in it. We turn away from him and we look for something else. And to solve the situation, most probably people go into a sinful reactions. We grab the first person that comes to us. We are tempted to beg attention. 
to do anything to get that attention from someone. And ends up, when we get older, and all of us know, those who are older people, the older you get, the more you know, that all these things were more troublesome than help. You know, later on we say, we made lots of mistakes. We rushed into relationships. We uh, did things that we regretted later because I didn't have the patience, nor the mind, nor the faith to stand my ground and say, I, all, all what I need is God. And he will fix things for me in the right time. St. Mary was alone almost her, all her life, even with people around her. Think about her standing at the cross with Mary Magdalene and John at her side. Do you think that helped? I don't think so. Because no one would feel her pain. No one. Not St. John, not St. Mary Magdalene. Both of them were, didn't have children. John was not a father. Mary Magdalene was not a mother. The only person who felt it really deep down in her bones was her. She was very alone in her pain. She was alone in her pregnancy. But the language she speaks to, the angel says that she's in deep intimacy with God. Deep intimacy. What did she do? How did she manage to get that close? It's simple. In her mind, it's very simple. The, the, the words of the prophets and the psalm says, go to him. Come closer to me, I come closer to you. It's very simple. He said, I came to God like a child comes to his father or mother. I'm not coming to God through like a complicated philosophy or anything. I just go to him in my needs. And if I don't need anything, I serve him. And I love him every day. My heart is dedicated to him. I trust him. I trust him with my life. I trust him with my future. I don't have any care. Uh, but I'm also his servant, her mate, his maid servant. And that's my life. That's it. I don't have any, she doesn't have anything to say. Does she? She's not going to give you a sermon like any of us, the priests and the deacons and Sunday school teachers. She's not. She doesn't have anything to say. Or what she has is a relationship that's so deep that actually takes care of all her life and mind and heart. And that's the fulfillment of the commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your might. And that's it. There's nothing else to say. That's St. Mary in a nutshell. What can you say about that? Let me ask a, a couple of lovers. Can you give us a talk about your love relationship with your girlfriend? What would you say? I don't know what to tell you. Unless you experience it, no matter what I say, I'm not going to be able to comprehend it. You're not going to say it. I'm not going to be able to, be, to say it. And if I say anything, you will not be understanding. Unless you experience that, there's nothing to be said. In her loneliness, St. Mary developed a mountain big glory by relating to God in every aspect of her life daily. That's, you see it from the little things that we have from the Gospels. She developed that and into a glorious life. That's why we see her in the, on the right side of her son. Why are you on the right side of her son? Because there's nobody else to be on the right side of. She's not on the right side of earthly king or a friend or a husband or a wife or a sister or a mother or a father. She's always on the side of God. So eventually she's going to end up where? On the right side of God, whom she loved and served all her life. That is St. Mary's life. So for us, when I look at us, and I don't want to take too much long in, in looking into this, for us, what do I take from St. Mary? I would look at her and say that loneliness, that aloneness, not loneliness, that aloneness can be cultivated. It becomes like a rich soil for an intimacy with God. You want to rush out of it, you're the loser. You want to rush out of that feeling alone, you're losing. You want to take that and use it to develop a relationship with God, you're more than a winner. You're more than a winner. And this is when you talk about it, you, you talk to, and the, the best people to tell you that is monks and nuns. They tell you that right, right from the beginning. They said, we found a way to be develop, develop a relationship with a friendship with Christ. And that way has to go through being alone. 
I go back to the story of Adam and Eve, and we do this also, also when we talk about, say, Mary. <clears throat> and I think about it since we talk about this, and I ask myself, so Eve was convinced there's something good in the fruit. What about Adam? So she ate because she was convinced there's something good in the, the fruit. The devil told her that, the, the serpent told her. If you eat, you'll become, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, and blah, 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 blah. All that commercial advertisement. Now you'll be the best, the best. And then what about Adam? Did you think that he swallowed that lie? I don't think so. But you know what I think? What do you think that he did, and why did he do it? He is going to go back to me, which is not good. So you say, I go with this woman, <laughs> better than because I got used to her company, and now I cannot live without her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I go with that woman even if she's going wrong. Then to experience loneliness. I don't want to be alone. And, and God said it. This is not good to be alone. But this is before the coming of Christ. So <clears throat> think about that. Think about that. And think that the only way that Adam could have solved this problem, he would say, alone, loneliness, it doesn't matter. I go to him, he will fix this situation, not me. He will fix it. He fixed it before, and he gave me Eve. He can fix both of us. That's the trust. He can fix both of us. That's why in our lives, as St. Mary would say, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let him do whatever he wants with me. Want me to be alone? Let me be alone. Because alone with him is much better than with a thousand people that are very close friends. By the way, book of Proverbs says, who multiply the friends does what? Yes, the doctor? Corrupts himself. <clears throat> who seeks to have many friends, will end up doing what? Corrupting himself. St. Mary didn't have any. None. None. She was alone. But she was not lonely. Again, because she has Christ, she has God, the Father, and Christ and the Spirit. Yeah. The and then she became the mother. The mother of the church. Yeah. God didn't lead, leave her alone. She became our mother. Everybody is a child of St. Mary today. You're right. Absolutely. I don't want to end up that saying that God's not going to give us anything. No. That's what Jesus said. He promised. He said, whoever leaves a father, mother, friend, brother, sister, son, daughter, for me, for my sake, will have what? Hundredfold. She left the community. She got the whole church. Very true. So the, the, the message I take for the Assumption of St. Mary, where she is now, and that we seek her intercession and her power and her help as a mother for all of us. And she picked us. She picked all of us. We are her children, including grandparents and mothers and fathers and children and sisters and brothers. And the, the message is, do not be afraid of loneliness. Do not be afraid of being alone, I'm sorry. Do not be afraid of being alone. As much as you direct your eyes, your gaze to God, direct your gaze to him, and there you will find everything you need. I love this from <clears throat> St. Augustine, I think he said, who has God has everything, and who doesn't have God, no matter what he has, will not be enough. Who has God, he has everything. And every, everything else that but God, a person would have, Nothing to fill them. They will not be as nothing would satisfy. And glory be to him. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit now. Amen.